This is Burp, Bob's unnecessary retroprocessor. And I'm Bob. Burp is a 16-bit processor of my own design. It's programmed in a language I call CASM, the C Hybrid Assembler. I'll show you the hardware, including some of my failed attempts, talk about the programming language, and show you the software that I've written for it already. The case is, obviously, inspired by the IMSI 8080 but also the Heathkit H8, along with a little influence from the PDP-11. When you turn it on, the software writes to the front panel text display, RS-232-9600 baud. So when archaeologists find it a thousand years from now, they'll be able to figure out how to use it. The switches match what's on the inside. You can halt the program, single step by cycle or instruction, Reset, examine memory, and deposit values into memory. The AUX switch comes from the Altair 8800 rather than the IMSI. And, like the Altair, it'll probably never be used for anything. Here's a contribution from the PDP-11, the memory or register switch. When you're examining or depositing, you can do it to memory locations or to the CPU's registers. So. I can halt the running program. The halt occurs on cycle 1 when an instruction is being fetched from memory. The front panel disassembles the instruction and displays it. I mentioned that the assembly language is a hybrid with C, so the disassembled instruction looks like a C statement. We can step forward one instruction at a time. This instruction has an immediate operand. We don't know what it is yet, so it just disassembles as N. We need to step forward, cycle by cycle, until the CPU reads the next word in memory. Then, the front panel re-disassembles the instruction with the immediate value. I can examine the value in register 3 by entering 3 on the keypad, setting the memory or register switch to register, and pressing examine. Then I can change its value with the deposit switch. If we look inside the case, we see a bunch of boards plugged into a backplane, just like the IMSI or Heathkit. My first thought was to make a computer based entirely on TTL. Others have done this, but I quickly realized that I lack the patience and or skill, so I jumped from 1970s technology to the 1990s with complex programmable logic devices, CPLDs, which were the forerunners to FPGAs. This was the arithmetic logic unit two Altera Max 7000 CPLDs. It does 16 different operations on 16-bit data words. It also has a RAM chip that holds the 16 general purpose registers. It's a dual port RAM, so it can provide two arguments to the ALU simultaneously. This was a bus multiplexer for routing data between the address and data buses, the two ports of the register memory, and the ALU's output. But there was a bug in this board. It didn't handle the address bus correctly. So I made a second bus multiplexer, this time based on CPLDs. I ended up using both of these in Burp simultaneously, so that I can have two data paths at once and instructions can execute faster. Then there was the controller board. Again, two CPLDs. But what's this? It's a friggin' 32-bit microcontroller. What the well, it certainly looks like cheating, but I was only using it as a ROM chip to hold the microcode for the controller. My first thought had been to use double EEPROMs for the microcode, but then I would be constantly removing them, reprogramming them, and putting them back in. Remember when I said I lacked patience? So instead I had a microchip PIC32 with a USB connection to my PC. I could download changes to the microcode, and the PIC32 just behaved like a ROM chip. So, this was my CPU, and it worked, like 99% of the time. I was running small programs, 
But every now and then, the program counter would get corrupted and the computer would crash. I spent two months trying to track it down and never succeeded. So, again, I lacked the patience and or skill and or the tools to track it down. After giving up on 1970s TTL, I gave up on the 1990s CPLDs and reluctantly, very reluctantly, went to 2015 technology with the Altera Max 10. As of this recording, Altera is owned by Intel. So, yeah, it's Intel inside. <sighs> Moving to the Max 10, let me integrate everything. ALU, registers, and controller into one board and one chip, eliminating any electrical noise issues. Also, the Max 10 has enough logic elements to support a logic analyzer inside the chip. I've used that to find bugs and race conditions that I am certain I would never have been able to track down in the old design. I literally would have gone to my grave without getting burp working. The controller is still based on microcode. I made a microcode compiler in Microsoft Excel. The processor state is on the left and the micro instructions are on the right. It gets compiled into Intel hex format by a Visual Basic program. The CPU runs at about 2 million instructions per second. It has an address space of 64K words, 16-bit words, a separate 64K input-output space. There are 13 general purpose registers, plus a program counter, stack pointer, and frame pointer. There are 27 instructions, though if you count all the variations with different ALU operations or branch conditions, it comes to 99. And there are still some unused opcodes. As I've been writing programs, I really haven't noticed anything lacking in the instruction set, so I don't know what I'll do with them. This is the memory card. It has an 8K dual port RAM, which gets loaded at startup by another microcontroller. This is basically the boot ROM. But again, I don't have to pull out the ROM chips and reprogram them all the time. I just use in-circuit programming to put new code into the microcontroller. Then there's a 256K by 16 RAM chip. It provides another 8K RAM, and the remaining 48K address space is bank switched. I haven't implemented multitasking yet, but this is my idea for how to run up to four programs at once. I have a board with a UART that provides an RS-232 interface. Here's the front panel controller. It's still using an old CPLD, but it also has a microcontroller. Managing all the LEDs and switches and especially disassembling the machine language instructions for display on the front panel is done here. Finally, here's the mass storage board. It has yet another microcontroller. All these microcontrollers that are more powerful than the main CPU. Oh well, this one is for interfacing to an SD card. There's also a USB port so I can download files from my PC. The microcontroller talks to burp through another dual port memory chip. Let's look at the software. CASM, the C hybrid assembler. Looks like C but it's an assembly language in that each statement is translated into a single machine language instruction and you're dealing with registers directly. For example, you can write R0 plus equals R1, but you can't do R0 equals R1 plus R2. You can define aliases for registers to make programming easier. When I said that each statement was translated to one machine instruction, I lied. CASM is a high-level assembler, which means it provides if statements and while and for loops. These compile to more than one machine instruction, but in a very straightforward way. Like other modern assemblers, CASM supports structures. You access them using C syntax, as long as your expressions are simple enough to compile to a single instruction. I borrowed a little C++ syntax. Burp has a separate address space for input and output devices. To read or write I.O. devices, CASM imitates C++'s stream operators. The compiler, or assembler, or whatever you want to call it for CASM, runs on the PC, so it's a cross-compiler. Programs are written in CASM on my PC, compiled, and copied to the SD card for Burp to run. I started with an open-source antler grammar for C, took a few things out, 
put a few things in, and then just started coding. So, what software have I written? Early microcomputer users started by flipping switches on their front panels, but quickly moved ahead to having monitor programs and debuggers in ROM. So that's where I started. When you turn burp on, a monitor program runs, displays the RS-232 message on the front panel, and then announces itself on the RS-232 port. There's a built-in debugger that you can enter by typing the bug command. But let's quit back to the monitor and pretend we're running a program that we want to interrupt and debug. We hit Control c and get into the debugger. It prints out the current registers. We can single step. We can step over so that if the instruction is a subroutine call, we skip over the subroutine's code. We can display memory. Notice the C like syntax where we're dereferencing a memory address. We can modify memory. Read from an input port using C like syntax. Write to an output port. And continue running the program. The monitor can also load and run programs from the SD card. We can list the files in the root directory. Oh look, there's a bin subdirectory. It has a small collection of Unix-like commands. What's next? I'll continue adding utilities and making a small multitasking operating system. From there, I'll probably add a graphics card for games and or a graphical user interface. If I come up with anything cool, I'll post it here. Until then, thanks for watching.